16. It's Pastor Mary. It is uh, Wednesday, May 5th, uh, Cinco de Mayo Day, and I'm trying out new glasses. Um, I'm trying to decide what I think of them. Uh, I wanted to try the new bolder look that people are wearing. These are Peeps. Uh, Peeps are I re really good glasses uh, for readers. And uh, good evening, whoever's on here. And um, so I got them in the mail yesterday. I got another pair that look a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure what I do with them. I'll wear them, excuse me, tomorrow night so you can check those out. But these go with my purple, so I thought I would put them on tonight. So, um, hey, Betty, I'm glad you're on here. I actually printed out the uh, God Paws you sent, with me, sent to me. And... Excuse my son. I don't know what's going on. He's being a little goofy tonight. He had a great day at school, but something has hit him. I don't know why or what. So, um, anyway, uh, so I'm doing better tonight. I know I was a little down last night. Mother's Day can make me feel that way without not having my mom here because I miss her so much. And uh, I've spent many a Mother's Day with her and course with moving away I didn't get to have as many with her as I wanted to but um I miss her I just miss her being here and um so anyway I'm, I'm doing better I'm gonna do things to honor her and um and if you got a mom uh you got a, even if you're struggling with your mom I hope you'll if she's still on this earth I hope you'll reach out to her and say uh thank her for giving birth to you and for having you hey Joan Welcome. I'm glad you're on here early. I said I'm trying out my new glasses. Um, I may be up to Barnesville tomorrow, um, although you live in Thomaston, right? I always get, the, get them confused, but yeah, because Andy lives in June, and um, Kay live over Barnesville. Well, Kay is Milner. Milner? Yeah, Milner. Um, but anyway, I talked to Kay today, and they're having a big sale the big uh, garage sale in uh, uh, Blairsville this weekend. So, um, sounds good. So, uh, I know, missing your mom is hard, I know. Uh, yes, I yes, I, I thought I had it right, so, good. Hey, Cheryl, good evening, good evening. So, anyway, before I put my new, new readers on, I said to Samuel, oh, do you like my new readers? I, I was going to put them on for him to see him, and he's like, oh, yeah, Mom, I like them. Well, I didn't even have them on. And then I put them on and he's like, uh, no, I'm not sure what I think of them. So, yeah, they're they're much bolder than I normally wear. And, but I love the color, of course, because purple is my favorite. And, I mean, they're great for, for view and everything. But I did get another pair that's smaller frame and aren't as bold. So, yes, peeps, exactly. Yes, I love peeps. They were on, I had Good Morning America on last week. And they were like half priced. So I I got two pairs and then I got um, sunglasses too. And these are the blue light. Hey, good evening, Paula. Because I needed blue light. So the blue light glasses, if you don't know about them, they're to help cut the um, blue light from being on computers and laptops and phones and stuff. And I'm on enough during the day that my eyes are killing me by the end of the day. And so I've had that much more in the last month or so. I don't know why. But my eyes just bother me a lot more at the end of the day. So I thought I I wanted to get them. Well, thank you. I, I wanted to get them. So, okay, so here's the adventure with buying uh, glasses. So I went on to uh, Amazon because I'm like, oh, you know, I just need to get them. Um, and I ordered some blue light glasses. But what I forgot about, it was in the evening. I wasn't thinking. It didn't ask me for uh, my prescription. My, you know, not prescription, but, you know, my strength. And so I just ordered them and they came and I'm like, oh, well, these don't do me any good because I don't wear glasses just to wear glasses. I wear glasses, you know, to read. Now I can see you all fine, but sometimes I get in the mode, you know, okay, I'm going to be reading stuff or whatever. So I just put them on, but I can see everything, you know, I see everything around me perfectly. I have no, I, I have 2020 since I had my cataract surgery. They said I have 2015 actually, I think in one eye. Um, so I, I read them just for readers. And so anyway, so then I got those and I was like, oh man, I didn't even think about it. I had to give the strength. So I sent those back. 
But this is, I don't know if you can see it, but you see the purple glitter? I thought that was really cool. So, hey, Martha, good evening. I'm glad you're on here. So, anyway, so this is one pair I'm trying out. I don't know that I'll ever wear them for worship because uh, they're a little big. I like I like a smaller frame for leading worship and stuff, but I wanted to try them out tonight um, and get your opinion. So, um, they're different for me. Um, I don't know that they'll be my most favorite pair, but I love the color. And that's what I was looking at. I was like, ah, oh, darn it. The other pair that I'm going to wear tomorrow night that are smaller, I got in uh, royal blue, navy blue, which I like blue a lot. Royal and navy are two of my favorite. I really love royal. Um, but they didn't they didn't have have that shape in this purple. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm they're half price. I'm just going to try them out. So anyway, all right. So Cinco de Mayo, happy Cinco de Mayo. Samuel was in Spanish too today, and I'm like, okay, well, so you know. We're talking about no independence in Mexico is June 12th, Samuel said. So today, he said, is the day they won the war. But what war? I don't know. So if you know, you know, happy to share. So we normally have a taco or fajita Tuesday night. That's what we always have. But I said to David, hey, let's do something easy tonight. You know, it's, it's Cinco de Mayo. Samuel had made some homemade cheese sauce the other day, and we had a bunch left in guacamole that David had made. So we just got Taco Bell. Samuel is his favorite thing. He loves Taco Bell. So we had Taco Bell for dinner and fruit and um, Mexican corn. So happy Cinco de Mayo. No, no margarita here. I said, oh, I would love a small margarita. But I said, I'm leading devotions online and I've got book group tonight. And I said, no, because if I have a half a margarita, um, it, it, I, I'm, not, I'm not drunk, but I, I feel it. And I'm like... I don't need to be that way. So I'll save the margarita for another night. So, all right. So tonight is Isaiah again. I think we had Isaiah last night, didn't we? I'm almost sure we did. Yes, it was Isaiah, but that was 32. And this is Isaiah 65. So give me just a second to flip to it. It's a beautiful day here in the in the Georgia. How is the weather where you are, Cheryl? I hope you had a good day. Ah, Dos La Mayo on Sunday. I don't know if you ever said that, de mayo. Uh, I, I'm sure you had something very yummy since your daughter is an excellent cook, and I know you are too. So I'm sure it was, whatever you had was amazing. So, all right. So Isaiah 65, starting at verse 17 to 25. So that's what Isaiah writes. For our, our God, God says through Isaiah. Good, I'm glad it was beautiful weather, Cheryl. I'm happy to hear that. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. Wow, that's pretty amazing. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. And the verse that the uh, author uh, speaks about is verse 17, for I'm about to create new heavens and a new earth. Hope. Hope that our children will be okay. Hope that the crops will be good this year. Hope that conflict can be resolved. Perhaps you've said things like this. Today was hard. I hope tomorrow is better. I hope my health improves. I hope and pray God will bring an end to hatred and violence. God speaks a word of hope through Isaiah to people who have known much suffering. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard, 
the hope and promise of a new beginning of peace and well-being make all the difference. The promises of God give hope. Hope can keep us working on relationships, encourage the farmer to plant once again, give leaders the resolve to settle a conflict. Does it mean tomorrow will be better for certain that there will be no problems in the future? We know the answer. But hope is the gift that helps us begin. So we hang on to it, celebrate it, and give thanks to God. And the prayer is, Lord of all hopefulness, thank you for the marvelous gift of hope in your good promises. In Jesus' name, amen. And prayer concerns for farmers who feed the world. So we include Cheryl's family and our family, because my brother Tim is on here. Good evening, Timothy. Uh, as we uh, think of the farmers, and I, I really love this. I probably... That might have made me feel a little better last night when I was having just a hard time about my mom and Mother's Day. But, you know, I feel better today. And some days we just we just struggle and we have a hard time and we get caught up in our what ifs and we worry about what's going to happen and what will the news be if we're having health problems or, you know, how are we going to resolve things with someone we're not speaking to. And um, And I love this. I love this about hope. Because hope is such a gift, you know. Uh, and I love that it talks about uh, the hope and promise of a new beginning, of peace and well-being make all the difference. Hope keeps us working on relationships. I love that. Yes. Encourage the farmer to plant once again. Give leaders the resolve to settle a conflict. My mom always said when a new baby was born that a baby is a sign of, is a miracle and a sign of hope from God. And um, I always think about you know, um, Linda from our church has a new granddaughter uh, in in um, Colorado. She got to go out to be with her. And even though Linda's husband, Bob, died from COVID in, uh, well, they were sick the week of Thanksgiving. They went to the hospital the next week, and he died on the Friday a week after Thanksgiving. And I know she misses him terribly, but I know having her new granddaughter gives her a lot of hope about the future. And that's the thing is, I mean, we can go through and we've gone through, you know, this has got to be one of the toughest years most all of us have gone through, whether we had any special circumstances besides COVID or not. Um, just so many things that we took for granted. I mean, I just think about, you know, how being together and giving each other a hug and, you know, the things we didn't worry about and you know, I think about flu season and um, winter and how, you know, in some ways, I remember when we were in Illinois and we served a church in Bloomington and we were very, you know, we were always very cautious in the winter time. We had a huge bottle of um, hand sanitizer outside the uh, sanctuary that our uh, parish nurses has had us put out in. We really encourage people not to shake hands at the piece, you know, do the elbow. And, but, you know, nothing like what we've gone through this last 14, 15 months. Nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, really, it's just been, it's it's been amazing. And to look back 100 years and realize that our ancestors went through this all across the world and all the people who died from that. And I wonder, you know, will 100 years from now or will it be sooner? Uh, that that our children and our grandchildren or great grandchildren will deal with these things again. And um, I was listening a, just for a moment or two tonight to the news, and they were saying that because we're we're probably not going to get to the numbers we need for herd immunity across the whole country, that scientists are now thinking there will be areas that will have more herd immunity. Uh, so, for example, in California around the Bay Area, I believe it's 90% have gotten the vaccinations and uh, it, and that there may be pockets of areas or it says certain age groups that may be more protected because uh, I think it's been a very high number and I'm going to go back and look because I'm really curious, but um, I think a higher number of people, uh, 65 and older, have gotten, have gotten the shots, but it'll be, I'll be curious to see what the numbers are like and you, somebody usually puts out, you know, maps where you can kind of see how that is. But, but I mean, I, I just don't think the rest of my life I will take for granted um, 
being able to be close to people or giving a person a hug. Um, because the other thing they said is that we may be dealing with this for years, but maybe not as extreme or as big, but it, that it might be like the flu where, you know, there's been a lot of conversation that people may have to get another vaccination in nine months after they got theirs, like a booster, like I get a flu shot every year. Um, and I'll tell you, I had the flu three, th no, three or four years ago in February, and it was horrible, horrible. And I had had the flu shot, and I was so miserable and so sick for a whole week. It wasn't like when I had the stomach flu a couple months ago, and I was, you know, I was really sick for 24 hours, and then I was weak for like another two, three days. I just, um, the flu was, when I had that for a week plus, I was, it was miserable, miserable. And I don't, you know, I do not want to get COVID. I, and I'm going to continue to be cautious, even though I'm now past my two weeks and I'm thankful for that. But, um, I just, you know, I'm never going to take for granted getting to hug somebody and feel comfortable about it. I mean, it's just so many things though that give hope, give me hope now and I'm grateful for so many things and so um and they do and there have been scientists who have studied who say that people who write down you know every day at least three things they're thankful for um they have a better outlook on life because they you know and I know I've done it I've done it for months and a year at a time and we also uh for a number of years uh with Samuel we would do our highs and our lows at night and I, when I did that, I realized that even on a really crappy day, um, that there was always things I could be thankful for, and that there was usually more to outweigh, more good to outweigh the bad in the day, and that always gave me hope that even on the worst of days, that you know I could hopefully could sleep through it, and the next day would be so much better. And you know, like last night, I was just more, I had just seen the things about moms and daughters and I was just weepy about it and um and I may still be weepy this weekend you know missing my mom and stuff but it's okay I mean <clears throat> grief is a sign an outward sign of of that love and that missing of that person who means so much to you and <clears throat> and so it's a process it's a lifelong you don't just get over losing your mom or your dad or your spouse I mean you just don't um you carry that with you. It may be different. It may feel differently, but you know, it, it's just different. And so uh, things can change over time. And you may remember more of the good things um, and, and not have as much grief. Um, so I wish that for everybody for this Mother's Day. I pray that if you're a mother, that your kids will recognize and say thank you to you for Mother's Day. I pray that if you've been a teacher of kids, that somebody's gonna say thanks for being my teacher. Uh, or your grandkids, or some of you, your great-grandkids. Um, but, um, you know, there's to me, there's just a lot of joy in being a mom, and there's, there's lots of difficulties. But um, yesterday, I went to the dentist. I had, I just don't have great teeth. I mean, I brush my teeth twice a day. I floss every day, and I still get cavities. I just have never had, you know, the teeth that withstood everything. And, um, but I have a great dentist. He's really wonderful and a real good guy. And uh, so I was under, and we had been talking about gardening before. And then uh, he was talking to his dental assistant and me and talking about being a dad. And he said, you know, it's just, it's, I love being a dad. And it's made me be, he said, it made, it's made me be more, become more of a man and be less selfish. And he said, you know, cause um, the dental assistant doesn't have any children yet. She's young. And she's married, but she doesn't have any kids. And uh, and he has a great, the dentist has a great dad. His dad is a dentist, and he went and practiced with his dad. And his dad, whose name is Fred Tim, uh, he, uh, he practices one day a week now. He's almost quite retired, but not quite. But anyway, um, and, and I was, you know, I said, well, you know, you've had some really good role models, your mom and your dad. And he said, yeah. He said, and I'm very grateful for my wife and for my mom, and I'm going to celebrate him this weekend. And 
I was like, that was really, I mean, he's just a good guy. He's a great dentist, good person, and um, and I'm very thankful because I had a great dentist in Illinois, same way, good dentist, great family man, um, really, really good person. So, so anyway, uh, if there's people in your life who have been a mom to you and they're still with us, say thank you, you know. It's just a great chance to thank the women in our lives for really being there for us. And um, we're going to celebrate all the women, all the daughters of God this Sunday at church. So I hope you'll join us online or in person. And uh, I look forward to you being there with us. Okay, so uh, I did add a few more prayers last night. Um, I And it hit me watching the news today. I hadn't written it back down, but I really pray for the cry, the um, hatred towards Asian Pacific people would calm down in our country and that um, people would feel safe. There's been a lot of incidents in the San Francisco Bay Area against Asian Pacific people. And um, I just pray for the hatred to stop and for people to stop acting out so ugly. And, um, and I pray that if we are ever, any of us are around when that happens, that we will stand up and for another person and um, just be there for them. And I also want to pray for India with COVID. It's just so bad. They don't have enough oxygen. They don't have the test. They don't have the vaccine. They don't have enough. And so we're just praying for um, the supplies that are being sent. We'll get there soon. Um, and just, um, just strength for the doctors that they will stay well. Um, hey, good evening, Barbara. Um, and that India, that they will see a decrease in their numbers and their deaths. There's just been, the country's just exploded with COVID. And so we just pray for them, pray for that to be lifted and pray for uh, the supplies to get to them to help them. Uh, we continue, we'll pray for Paula. I know Paula's got to go to the doctor next week. Paula, I just pray for peace for you and just for you to, to, uh, to know God's love in all of this. Pray for my friends. Tom and Deb, pray for Jamie dealing with cancer. Uh, pray for Sharon and Harry. Pray that they, if they're on the road, that they have safe travel as they go to help Sharon's brother. Sister-in-law or sister-in-law had a, got hurt last week and broke her pelvis. And her brother has a lot of health problems. And her sister-in-law can't take care of him because of her being hurt. So they've gone to go help them. So we pray for safe travel and um, also thankful for Peggy getting back home safe. We pray for Sarah and her health. Um, pray for Gail, Sarah and Gail, who both had um, some reactions. Well, we don't know what's reactions, but they're just having health problems. So we pray for both of them. Um, and for a special intention for someone I know. Um, and again, praise for Charlie doing so well that they can uh, go to Indiana for Connie's grandson's graduation from high school. Got a lot of people who are traveling for graduations and um, it's just that time of year, graduations and weddings and so many good things. And I hope that all of it gives you hope um, and gives you joy. And hey, good good evening, Cousin Jeannie. I'm so glad you're on here. And, um, and I just pray for all of you. We, Jeannie, we keep um, your grandson Gabe in our prayers and uh, happy birthday to both of your daughters who just both had their birthdays. And um, uh, I pray the farmers can get the crops in the field, especially those that, who might be struggling because of all the rain this this uh, spring. And just pray that they'll be able to get them in in a, um, a, a window, not, not so long, but that the fields will dry up so they can get their crops in all over our country. Um, I know we've had a lot of rain the last few days. Thank God we didn't have any rain today. I think as much as I appreciate and like rain, I think that it was bringing me down a little bit yesterday. Uh, several straight days of rain is, uh, gets to me. So uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the rain, and I'm glad that the rain is gone. So uh, if you have any prayer requests, please let me know. I'm always happy. I can always just include them as a special intention. Uh, I can pray for them privately, or I can share them, so please uh, feel free to let me know. Um, let's see, I'll be back tomorrow night, and then we'll have Friday fun night, and I'll probably look for some some either sweet stories or um, maybe some cute jokes for Mother's Day. 
So I hope you will join us uh, on Friday if it's possible for you. And you know, it's always here on Facebook, so you can find it later. Uh, and we'll have worship on Sunday outdoors at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So hope you have a great night and enjoy the beautiful weather. Um, and I pray that God will bless you to be a blessing to others. And now as we go from this time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night. Those watching tomorrow, have a great day tomorrow. Uh, blessings on your sleep. And I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow night. Take care. Good night.